This is three questions with Sean Miller. You like that? Get a little extra on your name. Yeah. Fancy. Okay. So I am talking to my good friend Shauna from Louisville ISD, where I will be speaking very soon before we actually do this. So a little shout out to Louisville ISD. <laughs> And Shauna, we, Shauna and I were talking, and that's her favorite button of all time. Is that correct? Yes. Maybe a little overused, but yes, yeah, my favorite. <laughs> it is your favorite. Okay. So Shauna is currently just changed role. She is the chief of staff for Louisville ISD. And I've been there several times. I absolutely, first of all, I love working with you, right? Even though, you know, we don't talk for a couple of years, you kind of get sick of me. Is that fair to say? And I mean, then, like, all in my, all in moderation. I'll, I, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. But yeah, just I've always had, I remember working with your administrators, your staff, and they're just absolutely wonderful people. And I just love Louisville. So before we get to the long podcast, we want to hear about some of your inspirations. I know you do absolutely incredible work. So when you think about a teacher that inspired you, whether you were as a student, maybe as a colleague, who is someone you think of and why? All right. That teacher would probably be my fourth grade teacher, uh, Miss Myler. So I um, was not your in the box, fit in the box student. I actually did not like school at all. Actually, my elementary school told my parents that I probably wouldn't be successful after high school. Oh, wow. And so just start creating a plan for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. really? So, but yeah, but it makes me really sad because if teachers, if, the, if back then they, I mean, I'm kind of old, so, but if back then they would have realized like, how powerful they could have, how they could have shaped my life that, mm -hmm. you know, they would have taken some ownership in that and really helped. But Miss Myler did not get that message. Um, so she really poured into me and um, really helped me see that me as a learner, because I did not like to learn, I did not like school. Um, and up until that point, I didn't see myself as a learner. Um, I was often embarrassed in class of things to do, but she used to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with us every week. And in that meeting, we gave feedback about the class, like what our thoughts were on class and um, what our dreams were, what our potential was. And so that's really the first time that I saw myself like, oh, wait, I, I can be successful at this. And I'm actually a learner, which is really crazy because that's what my whole life is now is supporting people and learning. So it's pretty ironic. And it's my top strength in strength finders. If you do that assessment, it's my top strength as being a learner. So, yes, that's wonderful. So, um, and probably just her, probably the most important thing about her was recognizing that I don't do school well, but I didn't have to do school well in order to be a learner and to be capable and to, you know, thrive. Well, we're going to, instead of air horn, we're going to pause. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got so I got I got something here. I I have thought about this sometimes. It's kind of interesting, right? How many times do you hear these stories of like people that are successful like yourself, and then they share like, you know, someone at my school said you'll never be successful, and like look at me now. I'm like maybe they did that to trick you. <laughs> like there's a little sometimes like there's so many stories like that, and it's like maybe they're just that was their maybe that was their trick of motivating you, right? You think that that's, there's no possibility you think for a young student? I like, I didn't realize. I don't, I don't know. Like I've just, I've just, you know, that's right I'm, way to I'm, not, I'm not saying like people should do, I'm like, by the way, little asterisk, don't say that to kids. Right. But I think sometimes like some, I, I, there's something weird that like, like, do you know any yeah. teacher that would be like doing that? Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. somebody thought like, I'm going to do this and that will motivate this kid. And it's like, no, well, that's like the worst thing to do. Like, I guess you know how sometimes how they'll say like, this class is the hardest class you're ever going to have. And you're not all going to be successful. Like who is motivated by defeat at the beginning? Right. Right. And if the class is like, this is, I think always thing is like, yeah, like no one ever passed my class. I'm like, maybe you're a crappy teacher. That might, <laughs> yeah, that might not be the, of the kids. Maybe it's a you thing. Right. Yeah. So, I just, I just find it like there's so many of those stories. Like you hear about people like my teacher didn't do this and they like hold on to it. Like I, I'm a, I'm a very spiteful person. So I'll be like, yeah, I'll show you. I'll hold on to those grudges for years. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. Some people maybe they think it motivated. I don't know. That's, 
But I mean, it does mind me now that I look back because I always think I wish I could go back and tell her, oh. like, you know, look what look what happened. Look what I did. That is I did get my doctorate a couple of years ago and I seriously got my doctorate because I wanted to prove to other people that I could do it for real. I, right. I thought back you're, to you're not you're not debunking my little weird theory, but I'm uh, really not, right? You're not. You're not. It's like it's like, yeah, I'm gonna like spite be spite successful, mm -hmm. right? There's something yeah. to think about. So don't do it though. It's like we don't want kids being successful out of spite. It's the right. worst, worst way. Anyways, you got your doctorate. So obviously, you know, I what's your doctorate in? Um educational leadership. Well, perfect segue to the next question. So when you think about all the administrators that you worked with. Who is someone, and maybe they said, you'll never make it as a leader. Maybe it's one of those. So I'm just kidding. So who is someone that you think of that really inspired you and why? Could be All a right, colleague, yeah. student, whatever. Yeah, it was probably my second principal that I had, um, Becky Poplin. So she actually, I was a second year teacher. I was still trying to figure out what was going on. Um, and so she- mad about the school thing. Right. I was still like, no, um, I was over it by them, but uh, she really saw something in me. I did not, not realize, um, and just poured into me and gave me unbelievable opportunities. She really, that's where I learned about the power of your people and investing in them and building capacity. She was a building capacity when I was a second year teacher. Um, and then allowing me voice to be part of the solution, which I didn't even know I had solutions right. at that time but and she also is really great as a leader at like balancing that pressure that you give and right. the support so like i knew she believed in me but there, and she had high expectations and i was not gonna let her down so she just modeled a lot of great great leadership qualities for me um at a young age and told me she's like what do you want to do you know after you have some years under your belt and i was like i really like curriculum and she's like nope you're going to be a leader like you need to go into leadership i'm like oh okay yeah that, you know that's that's actually such a comment oh just wait we got to give a little shout out yeah here. let's give her a shout right. out yeah <laughs> see now you're into the button so the that that your answer is like one of the most common ones i get i think that a lot of times um leaders and i think you know kind of going back to our first conversation teachers too they help people find stuff that's already in them do you know what i mean and sometimes we don't see ourselves right and can kind of figure that out and i think you know when a school sometimes doesn't do that that's where you know we you know we can have the spite success but i think part of it too is like actually helping people realize that because i i've had some of the, the people that i look up to most in my career I was like, what are you talking about? Do you know what I mean? Like you, you say that so much and then they, they say something to you and that you just don't see it and they help break. It's not that it wasn't in you. It's that they help you find it. Right. So I, I just absolutely love that. So I know that you've done incredible work at all levels of Louisville. I know you've worked with incredible leaders, but I know that you also look back on your career and go, well, I could have wished I could have done that better. Right. Cause we all do. And I think that, um, mm -hmm. we have a lot of learning curves. So when you look back, um, to your your first year as a teacher what advice would you give to yourself oh wow probably what i know now that i didn't i had to learn it really quickly but what i didn't realize at the time was the power of relationships and connection and how that impacts learning again remember i told miss poplin like oh i think i want to go into curriculum i man i could design the best lesson plan like i had I was all about curriculum and um, I really, you know, that, you, you know how teachers have that dream before school starts where like yeah. all the kids are on the desk and they're screaming, rebelling. And the teacher's like, sit down. So that actually happened to me my first year teaching. But, um, because, so I had to learn real quickly, like, Oh wait, let me back up and like figure out what's going on and really connect with kids like that. And now knowing, like I would teach curriculum right to my students where really i should i'm teaching my students and it's about curriculum and so um i think that being if i were more intentional about connecting with kids early on right. and then going into the curriculum um I, I just wouldn't have wasted so much time at the beginning of all that learning um that i did um yeah that's probably the 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 when I'm, I was actually thinking about my first year, uh, actually not my first year teaching, but my student teaching experience. And it wasn't 
it wasn't uh my experience wasn't yours this is probably the opposite i was like so relationship driven that i could get away with a lot of stuff but i actually remember one of the people that i was teaching with she could just design some of the most innovative creative things and she struggled so much i remember that distinctly and i think uh, I always say this, Dr. David Pesek, who's a principal, he said, a teacher that's really great with curriculum and bad relation with relationships will not last as long as one is the opposite. Now, I can teach you curriculum, but I can't teach you to like kids, right? And I know that based on your interactions, I'm not saying it's one or the other because I know that you have incredible relationship ability because I've seen you work at all levels, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think that's a really powerful thing. And like, if you are listening to this, and you know, on October 10th at 10 a.m., what you're teaching in math before you meet your kids, you're doing it wrong. You got to know your kids every year, different kids, different people entering your classrooms, all have different abilities, passion, strengths. You got to tap into that, know who they are, and work backwards from there. So, this is one of the reasons I love talking. We can joke around, but be serious. And I'm glad that you became the Michael Jordan of education where someone said something mean to you and you held on to it and you got him back. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I just kept shooting and shooting and shooting. Yeah. You're like, I took that personally and that's yeah. it. Now look at you. Mm -hmm. Chief of staff for Louisville ISD. So, Hey everyone, make sure you connect with Shauna. Uh, Shauna, it is so awesome to talk to you again. And I look forward to talking to you three years again from now when you aren't sick of me again. No, uh, it's always great to talk to you. We'll talk soon. We'll let's touch base sooner than that. That's right. Yeah. On WebEx. That's yeah, in a couple of weeks. Couple of weeks. All right. Thanks everyone for listening. Have a wonderful day.